So, we are such a crowd here. <laughs> I hope everybody can hear me. Great. So I'm here to talk about GeoClue, uh, which is a geoinformation framework. And what's that? First of all, well, now that there is only a small group of people, you probably know me and that's fine, so we can skip that. Okay. So the idea why we started doing GeoClue is that we realized that the computer knows awfully lot about you already. It knows uh, what you are doing. It knows who your friends are. It knows. It knows knows a lot of things. It knows the time of the day. But one thing the computer doesn't know anything about is where it is. And this is mostly because in the old times, computers used to be these huge beige boxes that were sitting on your desk or under the desk, and they were not moving much unless you moved house or something. But that has changed a lot. Uh, everybody has a laptop. Laptops are outselling desktops nowadays. Uh, and the other thing is, other mobile, mobile devices are also becoming computers. And therefore, we thought computer programs could work better if they could utilize the information on where you are. Uh, one inspiration behind uh, the GeoClue project was the uh, paper called Magic Inc. Information Software and the Graphical Interface, where uh, Brett Victor is uh, talking about how contextual information, things like whether the weather is good, where you are, such things could be used for making graphical user interfaces smarter. If you haven't read the paper, the URL is there, or you can just Google Magic Inc. And it, it's pretty interesting. It's quite long, but interesting. The other thing about GeoClue was that uh, not only everybody had computers, suddenly you had a smartphone, whatever, with you, but also <laughs> the mobile devices were becoming open. So there were the Nokia devices. There were all these nice green laptops. How many of you have uh, a Nokia tablet? One, two, open Moco. One, two. Oh, you are really into this mobile stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, those those are becoming more common now. It's still pretty much for the hacker audience, but as happened with the web, as has happened with a lot of other things, usually we hackers kind of go ahead and the rest of the world follows. So we believe that the open mobile devices will will become very much more common in the future. Another interesting device that is also very much a computer is here in the right bottom corner. So this is a Garmin car navigator, which actually is uh, built on top of GNOME mobile stack. That's the first commercial device to ship GeoClue inside. But of course, we in the free software world are not the only ones who have figured out that uh, geographical location could be useful. All the other big players are also coming there. Uh, iPhone has a very nice uh, location stack, very similar to GeoClue as far as I know. And there are different tools utilizing it. You can geotag your photos. Uh, you can see what Twitters have been posted nearby you. Nokia is also a big pushing big way into location-based services. They have put GPSs into a lot of their phones. Uh, their phones include car navigation software, free maps, and so forth. Android, Google's mobile operating system, also has a lot of location-based stuff. So we believe that this is an area that will become really big. And we think that free software should be there right from the beginning. So what is so difficult about location? Like, you take your mobile device, you tack in a GPS chip, and that's it. You're done, right? Then you know where you are. Well, that's great. GPS is a very accurate way of positioning yourself. Uh, if you see enough satellites, you will pretty sure know where you are. But it's, it's not without these analogies. One thing is, uh, if you activate your GPS chip on the device, for example, I had a Nokia N95 before. Normally, on standby mode or using it for browsing or something, it would last the whole day, one day for a mobile phone. Great. But if you 
if you use the GPS, you go down to about one hour of use. Great. Uh, probably they have done some power management since, and it probably works better now. But uh, <laughs> maybe two hours, yeah. But if you if you want to do a phone call, you know, having your device run out of battery in two hours is not so good option. So GPS has disadvantages. The other thing is, uh, if I'm standing here, there's there are some windows here. The roof maybe is not so thick. So maybe, just maybe, I would get the GPS connection, but maybe not exactly. So we need other options also. One is uh, GSM positioning. This is also something that the iPhone does. So before the GPS is activated, uh, iPhone looks at what cell phone towers it sees and uses those to figure out where approximately it is. You get a couple of city blocks area, basically, or maybe one neighborhood area from that. Quite useful if you have a GSM uh, modem in your device. Wi-Fi positioning is another thing. Uh, there are some free databases of uh, Wi-Fi base station MAC addresses and their approximate locations. These have been collected by board drivers and such. There are also some commercial databases. I think uh, iPhone might actually use one of the commercial ones. And the idea is you're standing here, you see probably several Wi-Fi networks. And based on those, you could figure out your approximate location. Again, maybe on city block area or maybe 20 meters radius or whatever, depending on how good the data is. For some applications, that's well enough. For some, it isn't. Then we go a bit further. If you don't have any, any other thing, uh, but you have an internet connection, you can use your IP address and a service called hostip.info, which has a free database of uh, IP addresses or networks mapped into their approximate location. Uh, if you're using a broadband internet connection, uh, in most cases, host IP will position you in the right city. Well, maybe here it would say Cologne, but that's not so far from the truth. Uh, for mobile, mobile networks, it's not so good. Usually when I'm in Finland, I'm using the uh, Sonera mobile network, and every time I try this, it positions me to Uvascula, which is in the center of Finland. Maybe they have some uh, proxy there or something. But anyway, this is also useful for some scenarios. If you know where the city, which city you are in, you can do things like change the Cox time zone and whatever. Also, something the uh, Wiimote guys were talking about earlier today was that uh, you could use proximity. So I have no idea where I am, but Let's say there we have some idea, and there we have some idea. And since we are so good friends, our phones are connected with Bluetooth network. And my phone could ask, OK, what are your coordinates? What are your coordinates? And based on the strength of the Bluetooth connection, I could then figure out that, OK, maybe I'm here on the stage. I get so lost sometimes. <laughs> Too difficult. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the point is, this is the software's way of asking. There are other things. There's a German service called Blazes. There's Yahoo's new service called Fire Eagle, which was finally opened to the public last week. Uh, basically, these are services where you use some piece of software or you go to the website and you type where you are. Blazes can use the Wi-Fi connection to do that. Oh, sorry, that's old stuff. <laughs> and then, based on that database, you can get the location. So, for example, I'm using Places on my laptop, and therefore, I know that I'm in this building because somebody had marked the Proscon network already. So, I get pretty accurate location. I don't know where I am in the building, but at least I know I'm in this building, which is pretty good. The other thing about locationing is this. That's a series of numbers. If you're into navigation, you can pretty much decipher where in the world that is. Huh? 
it's nearby. It's not here, but it's nearby. If you convert it into address, you <laughs> And when you have address, when you have coordinates, you can actually show a map. What happens with the map? Is it from map? Anyway. And when you have the location and you know the address, you can also uh, convert that into more meaningful location to people. So you know that, okay, it's a, it's a place where we had a dinner, there's beer, everything. So that's good. That's a lot better than what we started with, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, let it be said on the video, there is a wine glass. <laughs> okay, so what is GeoClue then? GeoClue is a DBus service for Linux devices, basically. Applications can use it to become GeoAware. You simply make a call to GeoClue, where am I? And you get answered. That makes it as easy to deal with the uh, Geo stuff as time and date, which probably the PHP people can tell me it's not so, so simple. We have abstracted a lot of the difficulties away. And also, what GeoClue does is it provides you the location, regardless of whether you want to know the coordinates or the human readable address. So we can use various geocoding services to convert between those two. You can input an address and we can figure out what are the coordinates other way around. You can input coordinates, and we can figure out where you are. Here's a little bit about the architecture. How many of you know DBus? OK. I probably should tell something about that, too. OK, so DBus is a uh, message bus that is being used both by uh, the GNOME and the KDE project. Um, with DBus, uh, your application can invoke remote methods, get their return values, or it can receive signals about events happening, like, okay, your phone is running out of battery, or your location has changed. And it's, it's really, in the mobile Linux devices, it's becoming really, really uh, the core, core infrastructure for integrating your application with the rest of the device. The address books work with, uh, with DBus, the calendar works with DBus. Um, everything's there. If you want to connect to the internet, you have to make a DBus call to tell the device to look for access points. If you want to make a phone call with OpenMoco, what happens on the background is a DBus call, at least with the latest stack. I don't know how the older one works. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we have provided a couple of uh, API definitions for GeoClue. Uh, there are DBus interfaces for getting the current location, like altitude, coordinate, velocity if you're moving. Depending on the positioning provider, you will know this. And also some interfaces for converting stuff between uh, addresses and positions. But GeoClue is not just a specification. We also have implementations. We have implemented several different GPS interfaces. We have implemented host IP, places, and so forth. So we have, we have the working stack there. Uh, and the good thing about GeoClue is that because all of it happens with eBus, is if you invent a new cool way of positioning yourself, let's say based on remote locations again, you can build your own provider. They are pretty simple couple of hundred lines of code maximum. You can write them in C, Python, C Sharp, whatever you want to. Whatever language that provides DBus. Maybe PHP will do this too. I don't know. There was some talk about it. And the different providers have to provide some attributes about themselves. So if you have a GPS provider, uh, it will be accurate if the fix, GPS fix is accurate. Uh, if you have a host IP provider, it's very fuzzy sense of location. And the reason why these abilities are informed is because we also have a thing called GeoClue Master. So if you build an application that needs location, you can, of course, you know that, okay, this is a car navigation application. I want to talk with the GPS only. Then you can make direct DBus calls to the GPS provider. But in the sense of 
a generic application that just needs some location information. You can use the GeoClue Master. If you contact GeoClue Master, ask, okay, where am I? And the GeoClue Master will go through all the installed GeoClue providers and try to figure out which of them has the best applicable location information available for you. And then it may come from GPS, it may come from places, whatever is available at the moment. But anyway, you get the location and you get the information about how accurate the location is. So, getting the location from, from software is all nice and good. But what, what could you do actually with it? On the server side with Midgard, we do, do a lot of stuff with, uh, with, uh, with geographical positioning. Uh, we position the users, so when we know that I'm here, we can make recommendations based on that, okay, these Wikipedia pages are located nearby or whatever. But also, because we have the location and we keep track of it, where have I been, we can geotag all the content within the content management system. If I post a photo, it will be geotagged. If I make a blog posting, it will be geotagged. Whatever. But on the desktop with GeoClue, first of all, one thing we have been thinking about and actually implemented also is context for my friends. So the idea is that I'm using a lot of communication software. There's instant messaging, there's email, all this stuff. Uh, if, if we plug the location context into that, then it might, might be useful for some cases. For example, if I'm in a completely different time zone than my friend, then maybe his phone would alert that, okay, calling him when it's 3 a.m. in this other place is probably not a good idea. Or, okay, Henry is in Köln, this other guy is in Köln, maybe let's go for a beer. And software that enables me to drink more beer is always good software. So, a couple of examples. How many of you use Twitter? Jaiku? None? Okay. Both of them are microblogging services that uh, support the concept of location. And what we did for one Twitter client in GNOME is we integrated it with GeoClue. So here you see the GeoClue icon. You can click it to change your location. And in this case, we have used the host IP provider to locate Jussi to Istanbul, Turkey, where the Guadec conference was. And this happens automatically. So if you move around, uh, GeoClue gets new location information. It will automatically communicate it to Twitter based on how, how accurate it is. You get, get more there. I don't think, I'm not using Twitter myself. I don't know if they actually utilize the location information anywhere. Yeah, but there are several Twitter clients that do things like alert you of Twitters nearby, like the iPhone application we saw earlier. So this might be useful, this might be fun. The other thing would be, uh, there's an instant messaging framework called Telepathy, which is a DBus-based framework that provides various uh, instant messaging services, Jabber, MSN, whatever. It's being used by uh, the GNOME, GNOME software stack. It's being used on Nokia's devices and so forth. And they are currently integrating GeoClue so that uh, if you want to, you can share your current location to your instant messaging contact. And then you can see where people are. Could be useful again. The other end of using GeoClue is the context for me. So if, if my software knew where I am, it could probably serve me better. One simple example. Uh, how often do you travel between time zones? Yeah, happens quite a lot. Nowadays, I have this phone. What it does is when I connect to a new network, it changes the time zone. Great. I never got that to work with my Nokia phones for some reason. 
But uh, my laptop is still in finish time. Uh, if I was carrying my Nokia tablet, it would also be in the finish time. How many devices do you have? How many of you carry multiple computers with you when you travel? Mobile phone is a computer. If, it's, if, if you can install software on it. <laughs> Three, exactly. And probably only one of them changes the time zone automatically. So, uh, okay, zero to one of those devices. So if you want to have all of them in, running in the same time zone, even cameras actually could fall into this category. Cameras are computers nowadays too. So probably they could also run GeoFlu and do all this stuff. And a little thing here. We integrated GeoFlu with the GNOME panel clock. And now when you travel around, when you open the laptop, if you have a network connection, we will notice, OK, now you are in St. Augustine, or now you're in Helsinki, and we can change the time zone accordingly. Very, very small thing, but helps users. I was in the academic conference uh, two weeks ago, and I was talking with the KDE people, and they were very interested in doing that. We will not do that for them, because we are not KDE developers, but we hope that they will implement it. And they, they seem very interested. So possibly this is, this is coming there too. The way we did it here in the, in the GNOME clock is because it's a, it's a world time clock, so you can have multiple locations here. Um, we made GeoFlu install a new, new location, which it automatically keeps changing as you travel around. And that's, that's how it's done. In this case, it's not, it wasn't so useful, because Jussi was traveling from Helsinki to Istanbul. And the time zone is Helsinki, Istanbul, Johannesburg, so... Hmm? Possibly, yes. <coughs> the other thing is, uh, for Guadek last year, uh, which was in Birmingham, I did a little uh, script. Uh, the Nokia tablets have a nice map viewing application called Mimo Mapper, and it has support for points of interest. So I did a little script that, uh, Python script that uh, checked the location from GeoFlu and then collected Wikipedia entries, positioned, uh, positioned Wikipedia entries from a given radius. I think it was a few, few kilometers. And put them into the map as points of interest. So when we went to Guadec, we had automatically on the map all the interesting new zones or whatever. Whatever the Wikipedia users saw fit to put on the map. Uh, unfortunately, hubs are not on Wikipedia, but if somebody knows a uh, free database of positioned hubs, then OpenStreetMap has it. Yeah, I know. I know. OpenStreetMap would probably provide this pretty well. And then th this is, again, something that will make people a bit happier. You land in a new place. You have no idea what, where to go. You don't want to carry a big Lonely Planet book around with you. With, with all this free data that is available, we could provide a kind of an automatic travel guide if we wanted to. And again, uh, there was an interesting talk about machine learning, learning yesterday. And we could use some machine learning algorithms to learn about the user, learn about your habits. If you're not, not into beer, you're into wine, then maybe not suggest the pubs to you or the breweries, suggest some other places. So uh, that's something a paper book doesn't do so well. With computer software, we can do it easily. Other thing. Uh, no, Again, a little thing. How many of you have some kind of weather applet in your desktop or browser or something? Yeah. What location does it show? Always the same location, exactly. So how about if you could also make uh, your weather applet show the current location instead of whatever? Could help. Um, another thing, uh, there was OpenStreetMap talk previously. I unfortunately couldn't go there, but you are all familiar with OpenStreetMap, I would guess. 
hands of who is in okay who is not familiar with OpenStreetMap okay so one thing about OpenStreetMap is because you can actually download the vector data the actual streets and not just pictures of streets uh, there are various libraries for doing navigation and routing using the data and that's something that we would like to see on mobile Linux devices more. I think uh, OpenMoco has some kind of navigational application that uses OpenStreetMap data, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. For example, what, what the MIMO mapper does is they break Google's terms of service and they use Google Maps routing data, even if you're using OpenStreetMap treatment to display the map, so that's not so nice. Uh, but this is something, the map data is pretty well available nowadays. If it isn't for your hometown, take your GPS and go out and map it. Mm. Yeah, Finland, Finland used to be like that about 14 months, months ago, and now I think we have all the big roads in the country all the cities and then some places like Helsinki had an amazing quality of data yeah yeah well I live in Helsinki several other open street map mappers live in Helsinki so of course you know it's it's so much easier to go out of your door with the GPS and start mapping instead of first driving 300 kilometers to middle of nowhere and then start mapping <laughs> like Netherlands did. No, the project started in UK, that's the reason. And, uh, and you, in UK they got some interesting deals done, like uh, they, they were able to get uh, GPS track logs from some courier companies, and stuff like that. But yeah, in Netherlands they got map donation in uh, US, they are using the publicly available Tiger data. They have been importing that over the last year because it's a huge set of data. Uh, I don't know whether it's complete nowadays or not, but I would imagine US is pretty good now. Yeah. But OpenStreetMap being very, very open in, in nature, it's always possible to go in and add more detail. So for example, here you can see that the map is pretty complete when you think about normal digital maps. But compared to Helsinki, for example, I don't see at least many building outlines here. In Helsinki, we have all the buildings in the urban area map. So you can see the shape of the buildings and so forth. Some of them have names, doors, services provided, like restaurants, pubs, whatever there. So that's, that's pretty cool. The better geodata we have available, the better geographical services we can build. Another thing I don't have a slide, slide about, which is pretty interesting, is um, how many of you know Google Gears? Yeah. So Google Gears is a uh, browser extension that provides uh, various additional JavaScript interfaces, like local storage. So your web application can store stuff on your hard drive. And now, uh, this week, uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, Google uh, finally launched a version of Google Gears that provides also a geopositioning uh, interface. There's a JavaScript interface a web application can use to ask, okay, where are you? It's only for Windows, and I think only for Windows Mobile, which, which is not so great. But if, if there are good Firefox hackers around, it would be pretty easy to implement the same JavaScript interfaces as a Firefox extension that would get the location from GeoGlue. And suddenly, all these services built for Windows Mobile and Google Gears would also work with Firefox on Linux laptops or even MIMO devices, OpenMocos, whatever. And suddenly, the geographical context, the user's location would not be any more limited to the desktop application. Our, our web applications could also do the similar things. Little stuff like uh, 
how many of you go to Google Maps every now and then? Yeah, everybody. When you type maps.google.com, what do you see? US. Yeah. Would it be used, more useful if it was the approximate area where you are at the moment? No? <laughs> Yeah, but the map of US you need always. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm sure Google will implement these JavaScript interfaces into their service pretty soon. I'm sure other, other websites with geoposition services, uh, look, content like Flickr, YouTube, whatever, will also do the same. So if we don't do this for the free browsers, then Linux users will be left behind. With GeoClue, we have all the infrastructure needed for getting the location easily and reliably. We only need to make a Firefox extension that will communicate this up. Uh, that's all from the official part. And now, if we still have time, which I think we do, uh, it would be interesting to hear what kind of ideas you have for geographical location on the desktop or even on the web. But what would you do if you knew where your users were? Set the time zone, yeah. Mm, yeah, because it's a PHP ini setting, right? Mm. Yeah, I think they do. There are there's a lot of databases available. Uh, GeoNames has very good databases of various things. Uh, postcodes to location, cities to location, location to cities, and so forth. And I'm sure they have some data about time zones also. <coughs> what else? Yeah, Google seems to do it. Uh, I get all the Google services in German at the moment, and I'm not exactly happy about that. What does this button do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They should use the uh, browser's uh, access language. Exactly. Uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I read about this uh, device that you can rent in Rome where you can see the when you walk around, they have 3D renderings of how the buildings were in the Roman times. Yeah. But why, why rent such thing when a lot of that data is already available in, in various free databases? And you already have a pretty capable computer that you can carry all, all around with you that has location available. So I think. The, the time when people actually rent devices to do that will be pretty short. All of that will converge into, into the software you install on your mobile phone on, or on your PDA. I would imagine so. What else? Yes, that's a good one. So, yeah, yeah. You could use, uh, use this to change your uh, usage profiles in instant messaging. Uh, maybe change the polling interval you are using for your emails, for your phones, uh, call profiles. That would be very, very nice. I walk home and uh, suddenly my office, office instant messaging account goes into away status or even offline. I swap between call profiles, all this stuff. Maybe I stop polling my work inbox. Pardon? Yeah, that's that's a very common Bluetooth use scenario. You can connect the Bluetooth of your phone with your computer, and you can do that to automatically lock the computer when you walk away or silence silence the music or whatever. That's that's pretty useful. Um, another thing I've seen for the iPhone, but not so much in the free software circles yet, is 
uh, connecting to-do items with location. So let's say your phone would start notifying you when you have some, some things on your shopping list and you are walking past the store or whatever. Or changing your to-do list automatically when you go to the office and when you go work, go to work. Little things, but lots of possibilities. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it could be used for recommendation services. Uh, I'm using Last.fm and they, they build pretty good recommendations on concerts I could go to. But the problem is uh, they built them for my hometown. So I get always recommendations for Helsinki, even though I'm spending a lot of time in Istanbul, and I'm not getting any recommendations for Istanbul. Okay, I could go to Last.fm and change my location, but you know, to do this every time I travel, it, it's a lot of work. It would be a lot nicer if, the, if I could communicate to Last.fm, okay, now I'm in St. Augustin, is there something here? Anything else? All right, thank you very much.